morning. So today I'm going to talk about uh, this plant over here in front, uh, the Luis Angeles. And I believe uh, here in Hawaii they're kind of underutilized, so I just wanted to promote it as a, a non-invasive ornamental for landscape as well as for potted um, containers. So the genus Mosaenda is actually uh, a species that belongs to the coffee family. Um, there are about 200 species that are found around the world. So it's found in Africa, in Madagascar, to India. It's also found in China, Malaysia, the Philippines, Polynesia, New Guinea, and in Australia. Uh, one of the first collections of Moes and were uh, done in uh, 1672 by Paul Urban. And uh, Mosaendas are pretty easy to identify. So you can actually, um, this picture shows you uh, the flower parts of the Mosaenda. So basically it has a yellow flower and um, it has this, uh, the white bracts called uh, petaloid sepals. So this cultivar over here is uh, Donia Aurora. So you can see that the flower, is, the actual flower is this one. And these are just the sepals or the bracts that you guys want to like to pass around. So the uh, ornamental mosaendas that we know now today were actually initiated in the Philippines. Uh, majority of the cultivars were initiated in the Philippines back in the 40s. Um, and the person who was in charge with uh, breeding, the breeding program was Dr. Juscar Omani uh, from the University of the Philippines in Los Banos. So they started the breeding program in like 1948. And a uh, majority of the cultivars, uh, the parents can trace back to these two species. So the species on the left is uh, Musaenda philippica, or aurorae, which is the plant, the, the plant that's being passed around, uh, which has um, multi-petaloid sepals. So these are all, uh, all of the bracts are expanded. Uh, the second species, which uh, co contributed to the colors, uh, is actually Musaenda erythropyla. It has a red uh, sepal and then the flower has uh, like a cream colored flower with a uh, dark red center. So uh, a, a bit of background on the uh, other, uh, on the aurorae uh, parent. So the uh, Musaenda philippica aurorae came from um, the Philippines, so it was an endemic, it is actually an endemic variety in the Philippines. It was first collected in 1915 in Los Baños, Laguna in the Philippines. And uh, another plant was discovered in 1930. Uh, once this plant was discovered, it was dedicated to uh, Mrs. Aurora Quezon, which is the wife of Manuel L. Quezon. Back then, uh, Manuel L. Quezon was the president of the Commonwealth of the Philippines at that time. Uh, to make the breeding possible, they wanted to, they had to change the, uh, the sex of the flower from male to female because uh, normally the aurorae is a male, so they crossed it back to uh, a, a related species, uh, M. philippica, R. philippica, to, to get the female form. The second uh, species that uh, contributed to the breeding of the Musaendas is uh, Erythropyla, Musaenda Erythropyla. It's called Ashanti blood or red flag bush. Uh, this plant is native to West Africa and uh, this plant served as the male parent for most of the cultivars. Uh, just a bit of a note on the naming of the cultivar. So most of the Musaenda cultivars were named after first ladies of the Philippines. Uh, there's, uh, they always have this um, uh, title at the beginning called Doña, which is a Spanish honorific title, kind of like Madame uh, in Spanish. Um, there was an exception with the naming in 1963 wherein um, there's this Mosaenda variety called Queen Sirikit that was named after the Queen of Thailand. So that was the only exception that uh, the Philippine cultivars uh, was named after uh, somebody who's not from the Philippines. Um, in recent years, like in the 1980s to uh, latter part of uh, the 90s, uh, some cultivars were actually named um, in terms of like terms that would synonymously 
um, like translate to the word news. Um, so the first cross that they made was a cross uh, wherein you have the female, uh, Philippica was the female, and then the Erythropyla was the male, and the, the, the Basically, what, what, what came was uh, Don, Musaenda, Musaenda Doña Hilaria. Uh, Musaenda Doña Hilaria was then used as the female and then uh, was crossed back to uh, Musaenda Doña Aurora. And uh, this, this cross resulted in three cultivars. In cultivars, so Doña Luz, which is the salmon col colored one, uh, Queen Siriquit, which is kind of like a light pink um, white blush uh, Musaenda and then you have also have Dining Imelda which is uh, a little bit lighter than uh, Queen's Ring. To get the red cultivar they crossed the Hilaria back to the Erythrophyla so the red cultivar is named uh, Musaenda Donia Eva. Um, there are also some white cultivars available and what the, the initial crosses were done by crossing the female aurora by the uh, male aurora to get uh, Mutya. This is a uh, cultivar that's already here in Hawaii. It's a little bit, uh, the, the, the petals are a little bit, uh, sepals are a little bit curly. So, so that's basically the uh, origin of some of the cultivars. So uh, this next few slides I'll discuss the existing cultivars that are here in Hawaii. Uh, Frondosa is uh, one species that's present here in Hawaii. I've seen it uh, growing in uh, Ho'omalupiya Botanical Gardens. Uh, this species is native to India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, and Indonesia. So it can be distinguished by, uh, you can see the flower is like dark orange, and then you have uh, one sepal or petal-like sepal expanded. Mosaenda uh, aristophyla, which is the red uh, parent of most of the cultivars is native to West Africa again and it's called the Shanti blood. Um, in the Philippines, it was named after Donya Trining uh, in 1946, uh, after Trining Rojas, which is uh, another first lady. So you can distinguish this cultivar by uh, looking at the sepals, the petaloid sepal. There's only one expanded sepal that's red. And then the flower is kind of like cream, cream colored with a red center. Uh, Musaenda Filipica var aurora, which is Donia aurora, uh, has all of the sepals, white sepals expanded, and then you have uh, an orange flower. Uh, Musaenda Donia luz, which is the salmon colored one, which you kind of see, I think, commonly here, um, is uh, pink, and then the sepals, uh, the petaloid sepals are a little bit curled. Uh, and then the flower, you can distinguish it by, uh, so it's the, the flower is a little yellow orange with some like a brownish or reddish center to it. And it was named in 1958 after uh, Luz Magsaysay, which is the uh, wife of uh, President Magsaysay. Uh, Gining Imelda is a cultivar that was named in uh, 1967, it was named after Imelda Marcos. And uh, you can see that the, uh, the, the petaloids are a little bit curled and then you have a dark pink like edge to it. And then you can see that the flower is orange. Uh, you can distinguish uh, gaining Imelda with Queen Sirikid uh, by looking at the petaloids and also the flowers. So you can see that the, the petaloid is flatter when you look at uh, Gaining Imelda, it's a little bit curled. Uh, the Queen Sirikit is mo mostly flat, and it has a darker pink edge to it. And uh, another distinguishing <laughs> characteristic for Queen Sirikit is that the flower is uh, a little bit bigger, and you can see the stigma coming out of the flower. Uh, whereas, uh, Gaining Imelda, it's, totally, it's a totally different flower. You can see it's or, just orange and it's like the petals are thinner. 
Uh, Mutia is a white cultivar which has a curly uh, sepal. And, and not all of these uh, petaloid sepals are expanded, so there's like small petals or uh, sep sepals. And then the flowers are yellow. So Mutia was named in 1982, and Mutia is a uh, term synonymous to somebody who's precious or important. Uh, Musaen the Donya Hilaria is the initial cross. The, the result of the initial cross between Musa and the Philippica and then Erythropyla. So this was named in 1974 after um, Hilaria Aguinaldo, who was the first president of the Philippines uh, in 1898. Uh, you can distinguish the flowers by, uh, so the flowers are yellow with the stigma actually coming out of the center also. And uh, the petaloids, uh, there's one big petaloid that's expanded, that's big, and then the rest of the petaloids are expanded, but they're smaller. Uh, Paraluman is another cultivar which was named in 1982. Uh, Paraluman is also Filipino, uh, synonymous to muse. And uh, I've seen this plant grow at the Pearl City Urban Garden Center. And you can distinguish the flowers by, uh, you can see that the flowers are just yellow. It doesn't have the stigma coming out. And um, the, the, the petaloids are actually darker pink compared to Hilaria. Uh, marmalade is a recent introduction here in Hawaii. Uh, this was done in, uh, the cultivar was created in 1995 in Alipur, India. And it was patented in 2008 in Florida. And uh, this plant is similar to Donia Luz, but the sepals, the expanded sepals, have a yellowish tinge to it. That's why it's called marmalade. marmalade. Uh, the flowers are similar to Donia Luz also, because the, actually the one of the parents is Donia Luz. And then Donia Eva is the one that has all of its uh, expanded petaloids red. And uh, the flowers, you can see that the stigma, there's like a red center, but the stigma is coming out of that red center, that yellow stigma. So this is uh, like a summary of how you can distinguish the cultivars by flower uh, shapes and colors. So you can see Doña Aurora on the left, and then Mutia is a little bit lighter in color compared to Doña Aurora. Meaning Imelda is uh, darker, uh, orange, but the petals are kind of like slimmer. Uh, Donia Hilaria is yellowish with the um, stigma coming out. Uh, Donia Eva has a red center. And then Queen Surikit is similar to Donia Hilaria. Donia Hilaria uh, but the center is a little bit darker. And then here are the petaloid shapes and colors uh, of the different cultivars just side by side just to distinguish them from each other. So Donia Aurora is white, Mutia is white, petaloid, a uh, little bit curly. Uh, Gining Imelda has a uh, mostly white, but the light pink tinge is, um, uh, the, the pink tinge is a little bit lighter compared to Queen Serigate. Queen Serigate has more of a darker blush to it. And then the, the petaloids are flatter in Queen Serikin. Donia Luz is pretty easy to spot. Uh, it's salmon colored and it's uh, kind of like an egg shape type of, the, the, the petaloids are kind of like oblong, oblongish. Uh, Donia Hilaria is also pink, but there's one big uh, petaloid that's expanded and then there's smaller petaloids that are expanded around. Uh, Paraluman is a little bit darker pink compared to Hilaria. And then uh, Marmalade is, uh, has that yellowish tinge on its sepals. And then Ashanti Blood or Doña Trini has only one red uh, petaloid expanded. And then Doña Eva has uh, all of its petaloid sepals expanded. So you can distinguish the cultivars based on this petaloid color and also with the flower color. Uh, there's other Philippine cultivars that are worth, worth noting. 
Um, I think Donya Leonila might be here in uh, Hawaii. It might be in uh, Lion Arboretum. I, I think I've seen uh, a plant over there. Um, another uh, one that's uh, nice, nice, uh, nice cultivar is called Maria Clara, which has a red, uh, red with a white blush on it. And then Donya Amelita was a cultivar that was um, named in 1998, and it's more compact. Uh, it has a more compact uh, growth form compared to the other uh, uh, cultivars. Um, in Australia, they've also started their breeding program, and they released uh, two cultivars so far, uh, Orang's Nursery in Australia. Uh, they released Capricorn Ice, which is a white cultivar, and then Capricorn Green, which is a red cultivar. Uh, in terms of uh, growing them, so Oceanas are pretty easy to grow and they, they can actually thrive in a wide range of soil conditions. Uh, they can be potted or directly grown onto the soil, but if you want to plant them or grow them in pots, you have to uh, more or less uh, repot them on a regular basis to promote new growth. Um, also, they don't like wet feet, uh, they want drainage, good drainage. And in terms of fertilizer application, you want to ap apply the fertilizers during the period of active growth. Uh, you can use slow-release fertilizer or you can do foliar fertilizer if you want. Uh, so this picture just shows you uh, Musa and the Queen Certificate that's grown in pots and it's used as a decor uh, in the Philippines. So this is one lobby that's uh, decorated with uh, Musa and the Filipica Aurora. So on the corner, so they, they just grow it in pots, kind of like poinsettia, they, they use it as similar to poinsettias in terms of indoor use. But they, uh, you have to, uh, there's a certain time that they can stay indoors and then eventually they will shed its leaves. So um, I'm not sure, I haven't, I'm, I'm not quite sure like how long, so that could be an interesting uh, research that I could do for, for some of the cultivars. Uh, in terms of growing conditions, so Kusaenda grows best in bright light conditions. If you grow them under semi-shade or shade conditions, they tend to be lanky and then they tend to be more vegetative, they don't flower as much. Uh, dormancy. Uh, the, these plants grow dormant usually during December to March. And what happens is that they are less floriferous, they shed their leaves, um, and this is the period wherein you have shorter day length and lower temperatures. Um, you can prevent dormancy by doing time pruning. Uh, dormancy is actually, the dormancy issue with the uh, Mosaendas is still unknown because they haven't really elucidated what really affects it, if it's light, if it's temperature, or is it moisture or is it a combination of all of these three things. So that can be another study uh, for research. Uh, common pests of musaendas are mealybugs, aphids, um, scale insects, tussock moths, leaf rollers, and then termites, especially in damp areas. Uh, these pests are easily con controlled by uh, your common pesticides. Uh, diseases of musaenda include Cercospora leaf spot, uh, also viruses, uh, but I haven't seen any virus plants here in Hawaii yet. Uh, and then if you have a really bad infestation of uh, mealybugs, you have to see mold on, on the plants. Uh, pruning. Uh, pruning actually makes the plant vigorous, more vigorous, and it actually improves the growth form. And um, I would advise pruning the plants regularly during uh, the onset of dormancy. Um, usually, this is how they prune it in the Philippines. They, they kind of prune it back really hard. And then uh, this is at the onset of dormancy. And then uh, when dormancy breaks, then they kind of flower back. So uh, this picture on the left is severely, a severely pruned mosaenda. And this is what it looks like if it's uh, severely pruned and then you have the regrowth. So it actually has better shape when you uh, prune it back. Uh, propagation. Propagation can be done by hardwood cuttings, uh, about four to six inches long. Uh, you can add hormex if you want to, to uh, 
uh, improve the routing percent. Uh, I would recommend uh, sticking the cuttings in a one-to-one -one for like vermiculite mix uh, under mist or you can actually also root the cuttings under like a plastic bag, like a clear plastic bag, just keeping it uh, the humidity high. Uh, and expect rooting in, in about four to five weeks. Uh, in arching or budding or grafting can also be done with mosaendas. But these are usually used or employed in more difficult uh, to propagate cultivars like Doña Eva. Uh, so Doña Eva, the way to go for propagation is usually uh, in arching or grafting. Uh, the rootstocks that are usually used for Doña Eva is Doña Luz or Paranuman. Uh, and then I mentioned cleft grafting and then uh, patch or pea budding can also be used for propagation. Um, air layering is uh, for, uh, the most popular method for propagating musaendas and um, usually you can add hormone on the air layer if you want to improve the rooting. Um, to make uh, like potted flowering musaendas like this, um, I would recommend using apical shoot tip cuttings uh, about 4 to 6 inches long. And what I usually do for propagation is uh, I cut the leaves in half, the lower leaves half, and then dip the, uh, the apical cuttings in uh, Hormex number 45 and stick it in again in, in, in one to one for light or make light under mist, and then you'll have rooting in about four to six, uh, four to five weeks. So, this is actually uh, these mosaendas were actually propagated, I think, in August, and uh, in about four weeks, this is how the rooting looked like with um, or mix. So after rooting, you can pot it up and then uh, put uh, well-drained media, kind of like a mixture of uh, cinder and compost or cinder and coconut wire, and then you fertilize it. So that's it for the propagation. So uh, the next thing is uh, weed risk assessment. So mosaendas are uh, a nice uh, ornamental shrub to have because they have they're basically designated by the Hawaii weed risk assessment as low in terms of uh, getting out in terms of being invasive. So the scores actually of mosaendas range from zero to about like negative nine. So this is just. Uh, some of the uh, scores that I found in the plant pono website. So the white musaenda is a, so it's a plant pono, the designation is plant pono. So the score is negative nine on the weed risk assessment. Uh, musaenda donia luz has a score of negative five. Uh, donia trimming, which is the red cultivar with one big sepal expanded, has a score of one, negative one to zero. I'm not quite sure what that red, red musaenda is, if it's a uh, different cultivar or not. So I just kind of lumped them together. And then uh, flag bush, which is musaenda uh, from Dosa, uh, has a score of negative four. And then a white musaenda, which is which might be this one, also has a score of negative three. So in general, um, they're pretty non-invasive because yeah, they don't. They produce seeds, but they don't spread. Uh, you have to special care must be taken in terms in, in terms of growing uh, plants from seed. So, so in summary, so why use mosaenda? Uh, they have a long flowering period, um, although they have a dormancy period. Uh, in terms of um, incorporating it in a landscape design, I would recommend like putting it at the back, and then you have like a shrub. Uh, surrounding it so during the dormancy period you can cut it back so it's it disappears I guess in the landscape and then it comes back again in, uh, like during its flowering period but they have a long planting uh, flowering period uh, they can be grown in pots and uh, in landscapes uh, they're relatively easy to propagate air layers apical cuttings uh, budding or grafting uh, they all are also relatively easy to take care of, uh, and then uh, the, they're actually non-invasive, so there's uh, the score is zero to negative nine. So, uh, so yeah, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and here's my email.
email address you can